Hi guys, how's everyone doing? Uh, it's time for another moonshine video. This one is, we have to look at the little key here. Batch three is a trimix, and this is the sixth generation. And it was put on at nine seven, and I'm finally getting to uh, the distillation on this. Uh, you can see there's no more bubbles. So let's take the lid off and see what's going on inside. Okay, there's what it looks like inside. Uh, it's nice and clear. There's a few little floaties. That's from the grain. This is a tri-mix, so it has uh, corn. I put flake corn in there when I mashed it. Uh, rye and oats and at this point in time I could no longer tell you what the ratios were probably like a 80% corn maybe even a 90% corn and 5% rye and oats or could have been the 80% corn and then 10% rye 10% oats something along them lines it wouldn't have been any more than that and uh, it's it's a really you can see all the stuff on the top of the lid it's really no more uh complicated than that as far as making a recipe and mixing things uh let's see let me find the i'm getting i need to build a shelf in here i'm getting uh or find a shelf i got stuff piled everywhere okay let's get out our hydrometer and let's check the gravity on this this is the lazy way to do it let me find my glasses uh, I've taken my glasses out of here <laughs> I'll be right back okay see it's, it's moving nice and freely See what kind of reading we get so if this hydrometer went to here where's that right to there that would be zero so let's see where we're at We are below zero, so that means uh, I believe I should totally really keep better notes. I fermented this at a 12% ABV, so that means we're at higher than 12%. So I will have a really good return on the yield of this. And let's take a little taste. Let's see. has a kind of a beer a little bit of a beer it's sour and you can definitely taste the alcohol content so with that I'm going to uh, I'm just pausing the video as I go to get rid of the less interesting parts but I'm gonna siphon this into here which will involve nothing more than taking that cane siphon, hooking up a hose to it, and transferring it in there. Before I do that, I'll place a piece of, I'll get rid of this, get myself a bigger target, and I'll take some clothes pins and put some cheesecloth on there so we don't get those fines from the green on there. I also want to show you guys this. This is a different type of controller I'm going to try on this run because I'm going to use a pot steel instead of reflux on this and see what happens. This this trimix has a lot of complexities to it that I think I'm losing by running it through four or five plates. Uh, by plates I mean the bubble plates and, and the reflux. So I'm just going to do a straight pot steel with this with a onion head on the steel. And I'll show you that a little later. But... 
Uh, if I use, I've, the PID controller I found, I, I love the way it works on the uh, uh, reflux column. But the, the pot steel, the way it works, it leaves a little to be desired. So the other one I just showed you was a smart controller. And it tries to uses a thermal coupler and the electronics inside and it tries to predict or not tries it does it 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 predicts and it keeps the temperature at a constant from the top of the steel to the bottom and this is basically a volume you have no volume or you have high volume See, it goes, starts down at one and goes all the way up to 22. And actually it goes a little past 22. <laughs> so, uh, and then this little meter here that shows you percentage of how much power you're using. And so what? this does is it manually I have to manually uh, adjust this according to the temperature in my flow that comes out of the steel so uh, it takes a little more paying attention uh, a little more maybe a little more practice or understanding of how a steel operates and, and that kind of thing I guess is a good way to say it to use this and this even though it looks complicated is nothing more than a universal plug you can put several different types of plugs into it and then you can see here's my heating element this is my indestructible steel cart <laughs> uh, look at them casters man I can roll it around easily and put heavy things on it and uh, it's just a big dolly uh, something that got made and so you can see the this has a 10 gauge cord on it and it plugs into the PID I'll, I will just plug that into here and control it this way so I'll start it off on high and then we will, uh, as it starts to produce the methanol, we'll let that run off and then we will adjust the flow to get it to where we like it. And as, the, as we separate the alcohol from this wash, we will, uh, have to increase the power because the chemical composition of this is changing see that's one of the things about distilling is uh, there's no one sets all everything is a little bit different and as you subtract the alcohol your chemical composition of your wash changes you have to add or subtract heat uh, add because uh, water which is what the majority of this is water boils at a higher temperature than alcohol so to, to get them to separate you have to keep adding more heat as you lose alcohol content in your wash and uh, something else I'm going to do I, I bought uh, I found a place to buy dextrose online that I can get it cheaper than sugar and dextrose is corn sugar so I've been using a cane sugar which is about as unrefined sugar, which I, I think is in the 90s percent fermentable, in high 90s, maybe a little less. Uh, table sugar is about 80 percent fermentable. Dextrose or corn sugar is 100 percent fermentable, and it leaves less of that sugary taste, which I I can't describe that to you, uh, but it does translate into your whiskey, which is why an all grain mash where they just use only the the starches they convert into sugars 
to ferment the mash is a higher end or better tasting mash because it doesn't have that sugary flavor to it so even though this this dextrose does have that it has less so I, I don't think I will use it to bump up my volume anymore but I'll use it to keep the same volume and maybe get a little bit better quality whiskey and uh, so I think for now that's enough let me get busy to uh, siphoning okay as you can see we are siphoning in it's kind of hard to do this one-handed <laughs> Just wanted to show you that little process. Okay, that's what it looks like at the bottom of the bucket. Seeing it on my glasses. Destroy them. <laughs> Knocking things over. Uh, let's see, that's what it looks like in there. Kind of see the grain and stuff down in there. And the yeast in there are just dormant. They're not dead. They're not used up. Uh, it created so much alcohol in its environment that it, uh, the yeast went dormant. And what I can do is just add more water. And I'll put the corn sugar in there this time. And to get the up to the proper ABV that I want, which I'll do by monitoring the, uh, hydrometer as, as I added in uh, another benefit to dextrose is our corn sugar is uh, uh, it dissolves a lot easier than sugar so that's it that's just a makes life a little easier on you and so I when I and I'll fill that up and then I'll wait for it to ferment out again and I'll have this all over again and I'll have a little bit different flavor profile because I'm reusing the mash and see here to get off at the very end of this it's real fine and it kind of plugs up the screen so I I just use a spoon to kind of scrape the fine stuff off the bottom and keep it stirred up in there and in the liquid wall drain out let me pause that for a minute and we'll get back when things are a little more interesting Okay, there we go. After about 15 minutes of stirring, it's almost drained. A little bit around the edges there. I'll, I'll just take that off and squeeze the rest of that out. Uh, uh, not the most efficient thing, way to do it, but it's the best way I, I have to do it with my means and availability right now. Uh, I want to reuse that mash so I need to get as much of the liquid out as possible I, I don't want any alcohol left over to start my new fermentation in the bucket uh, there's going to be a little just just because of what it is but I don't I want as little as possible so the next generation will kick off or start fermenting nicely or easily or do its job the way it's supposed to uh, 15 minutes for that little bit <laughs> uh, if you're if you don't have patience uh, fermenting and distilling is not for you everything about this stuff requires time uh, takes hours to distill uh, it's most of a day is processed to, to run the still at, at this size at, at 10 gallons with the, the heat that I'm, I'm using it could be better but I'm using what the best available that I have to me right now uh let's see if when you put on a, a mash and start to ferment it that's a week to two weeks uh, then you have to wait all that time and hopefully it's good so the learning curve uh, I wouldn't say the learning curve the learning process uh, it, it takes a lot of time to develop because you're waiting so long in between each one and you have to make a little minor adjustments to get the way you brew and uh, your failures and everything so it, it takes a lot of years to really uh, master it or it even takes a lot of years to just get okay at it so uh, but it's something I enjoy doing and 
a lot of other people do as well. Hopefully, uh, that our little craft or hobby here will become legal one day and we won't have to be outlaws by just making something that's, uh, you can go buy off the store shelves and that the powers that be uh, think that it's okay to control. So they get their profit and also they want to permit us to charge us extortion fees in order to do this or they will bring their violence down on us. But anyway, enough preaching <laughs> off my soapbox. Uh, I'll come back a little later when i am got the steel all set up and gotten started. Okay, now the steel is all charged up. Now let's go ahead and get Anna and Nicole all built and ready. There's the first step. We got this small pipe in the way. And this is just copper, bare copper wire. I stick that in there to kind of just get plenty of copper in the vapor path. Okay, that's the first step. Now the onion head is on. And see there's one of the seals. Just a little silicone seal. I need to get another reducer. One that doesn't have a thermometer in it in that spot. It's not really needed. That one I had to plug the hole. That's where the thermocoupler I usually use for the PID controller. Uh, not sure if I can do this with one hand, but we will give it a try. See, and there's the, the tri-clamp kind of goes on like so. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to do that. But you get the gist of it. That's how that all goes together. Okay, here's Anna all. Let me zoom out. There, that's better. There's Anna all set up in pot steel mode. Just a straight pot steel. There's the only thing that's in the way to give a little reflux is the onion head. Uh, so the vapors will come up. They'll come up this way. They'll, they'll be on the copper. And as they travel around, some of them will get condensed. The not much we get condensed back into water and or whatever less volatile chemicals and drop back down into the pot so uh i'm guessing right now we're going to come off at 140 to 160 that's a pretty broad guess but probably 150 ish and uh we'll see what we get out of that and that's what she looks like right now. One of the challenges you always face. Uh, there's so many different configurations I use. Uh, see, I started up here. That was where my catch jar went with the original setup that I had. And this, this little stand that I built. And now it's down here. And when I set it up like this, it's down here. So I guess maybe I could add one more board down there on the bottom leg for a catch jar. <laughs> uh, we'll have to figure something out. But uh, for now, this works. That comes about the right height. And I'm going to plug it in, eat some lunch, and we'll get back to you when it starts producing. Okay, we are turned on. It says we're running at 103% of power. I'm not sure exactly why that is. See if I, that's really just a visual idea. We're all going to run off a of temperature, and you'll see there's 90, 103, I don't, 96. It's really touchy. Oh. I don't know if I can even make it say 100. Anyway, that's all the way up. <laughs> and you can hear it. The helmet getting off. And. I will see you in a while. Hi guys, here's something kind of interesting. Uh, you can see the temperature there is not quite 140. That's down here in the onion. 
up here it's like 130 something and then we are just starting to drip alcohol boils at 173 point I think three I could be wrong degrees point something at sea level so I am like a hundred feet above sea level uh, I forgot what that translates to exactly but anyway uh, uh, the fact that that's dripping now that is uh, the stuff we don't want that's that's uh, methanol coming out and you can see now as this gets closer to 140 get a better angle this way there we go yeah not so much there that's better see that's getting up to 140 we're, we're definitely getting the bad things out that that we don't want to drink and then after that acetone will come and then when this gets up to up here to around 170 uh, that's when we'll start collecting the heads but this stuff here that's what we have to throw away that's the, the poison okay we're back for to see the steel running it's uh there's my flow you can see uh here's the control where i got it running at like 66 percent see let me show you i'll turn it up to 80. now watch give it a minute and it'll there see it's already starting to run faster but you don't want to run too fast. I'm finding that I like 66 just right. Okay, I'm back to there. This thing's really touchy. Okay, 67. I'll call that good. <laughs> uh, I've got this much, this much whiskey and cut so far. So all these jars. Uh, I poured enough of the hearts together to proof it and looks like right now we are proofing out at get to zoom in on that there we go 142 144 something like that not too bad that's pretty normal for a, a pot steel and uh, I already sipped a little bit. It's pretty strong at that proof, but uh, boy, it tastes so yummy. Uh, this this trimix, the uh, corn rye and 